The music industry is ripe for disruption, and our next guest is using AI and blockchain to create an alternative path forward for musicians and creators. Joining us now is CreateSafe founder and CEO, Dauda Leonard. Dauda, welcome. Hey, Jen. How's it going? Oh, Thanks for having me. It's just going fabulous this morning. Thanks for joining me. Uh, and I'm super excited to talk about this because... Like I said, uh, the music industry is an industry that has been suffering for disruption. Uh, talk to me about Create Safe and what you're building to help innovate in this industry. Yeah, so uh, Create Safe is a software development company, and we're building a new music production studio that automates the creation, distribution, and marketing of music using artificial intelligence. Um, and we also use uh, smart contracts to manage a lot of the backend royalty payments and fan data and information about, you know, an artist, you know, top fans and, and things of that nature. Um, we started Create Safe with the, with, with the idea that a new music industry is developing. Um, now, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you probably had only like thousands of people who worked in the music industry. And now you have millions, multi-millions, you know, um, it's estimated there's about 60 million plus music creators in the world today. And that means that there is a large growing middle class of artists, you know, artists who can make, who are making anywhere from $50,000 a year to a million dollars a year. And you've never heard of these people. And most people, you know, would, wouldn't have heard of these people because, you know, with, with social media networks and streaming platforms, the ability to earn a living and not necessarily be a star um, is possible today. Um, and there's also superstars, you know, growing because of these new, you know, technologies. Um, but that means you need the tools to manage these new types of careers, these digital first, digital native careers for artists. And we see artificial intelligence and blockchain networks as one of those solutions to being able to grow your career in a sustainable and equitable way. Now, I know you work with a lot of top tier artists. You are Grimes's manager. When we talk about AI and blockchain, there is often a stigma that comes along with both of these two technologies because they are being developed at such a rapid pace. How are musicians looking at both AI and blockchain and how are they thinking about it? Is it something that they're still kind of um, iffy about? Quite frankly, they're definitely afraid. I think, um, you know, uh, the, the way technology works, and we've always seen it works, is most of the time you have the early adopters um, who, who aren't afraid and then everyone else who's just sort of on the sidelines waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, you saw this when the synthesizer um, came came onto the scene, um, where it replaced you know you know live musicians, quote unquote. But that didn't really happen. Um, people just felt that that was going to happen. Same thing with software like Pro Tools and Ableton, and where people thought it was going to replace the studios and the studio engineers, and that didn't happen either. Um, and now you have things like AI and blockchain, where people are you know, afraid that it's going to like replace different jobs. And the reality is this, it's going to create new skill sets, new talents. Um, it's going to open the door for more people to earn a, an equitable um, and sustainable living, you know, being creators. Um, you know, artists like Grimes, she always has believed that there's this dance between the engineers and the artists. And that's how her career exists today. You know, for her, if my if if my space and garage band didn't exist at the time that she decided to start making music, there would be no Grimes today. And so she equally sees how technology plays a role in the development in the, the the development of her career. And I think that there are other artists who are you know very curious, especially when it came to Web three. I think you saw a lot of different artists who felt that there was a path forward with Web3 for them, and they still do. And I think that there still is. And I think with artificial intelligence, it's so new, you know, like, like although like people have been working in the, the field of AI for, you know, 50 years now, it wasn't until last year where you saw this sort of like magic moment where, you know, uh, ChatGPT 
or mid journey made it possible to make, you know, take ideas and turn them into reality with the speed of thought. Um, and that's frightening to some, and that's, you know, that's really exciting for others. Like, you know, w- one thing that we're seeing is like, there's new styles of, and genres of art being made now because of AI. It's almost like AI is like the new paintbrush or the new, or the new, you know, um, piano. Um, and I think that's how you have to think about it. You can't think about it as like, oh, this is going to replace me. You have to think about it. This is a new tool that I get to learn to enhance my ability to make my ideas and my dreams and my creativity come to life. You know, when I think about music and AI, I think about all the videos I see on TikTok of AI voices recreating the voices of some of the most popular uh, musicians on the radio. Uh, Talk to me about how AI can be implemented into workflows. Like what's the best use case for AI in a musician's career? I think right now it's about, you know, having almost like a creative companion. Uh, you know, there, you know, a lot of times we get stuck in our mind on an idea, or we might feel like something that we've created is not good enough. And then when you have this sort of companion with you at all times that can sort of like push you along, it can add a new spark to your creativity. I think that's one simple way. And, you know, an example of that is if you are a songwriter and maybe you don't think that your voice sounds amazing. Maybe you don't, you know, you're not as confident, but with a voice model and access to someone else's voice who maybe doesn't feel, um, they may not feel confident about their voice either or being the front person, right? That's always existed. There's people who have these talents, but they don't necessarily feel comfortable being out there in the world. And now you can bring these two people who maybe didn't feel super comfortable in their abilities and one can access this person's voice and now take their song and bring that song to life that would have never really, you know, gotten put into the world. And that per and, and, and on the other hand, this person can bring this, you know, this songwriter can bring this voice into the world that maybe wouldn't have gotten heard. And I think that that's a beautiful that like like moment of like not only like workflow productivity and efficiency where you're able to bring people together and collaborate in that way, but also creative output, like this I you know, this possibility for an idea to come to life in a way that wasn't possible before. Now, I have to ask you, this comes up every time we talk about AI, comes down to copyright and intellectual property rights. If if we are acting on the scenario that you've just explained to me where, um, you know, maybe I'm writing a song and I want to bring it to life in the voice of someone else, is there some kind of understanding? Is there like a re-education that needs to happen of the music industry when it comes to sharing voices and, and almost like participating in the music making process as an open source process? Because to be honest, I think about artists and I think, you know, they, they hold a lot of ownership and pride over things like their voice and their, and their creation. So um, how are you thinking about the, the, legal ins and outs when it comes to using AI? Well, I think that the reality that we're facing as humanity is that the the laws of the the universe are going to get rewritten because of AI, um, not only just copyright. um, And so we're just at the forefront of that sort of happening. We've got to see how people use this technology in order to create precedent that, you know, that's how law works, whether it's like good precedent or bad precedent, where we have to see you know, what's possible and how people want to use these tools. And I also just think that that's where blockchain networks really thrive. Uh, when you, when you, when you think about the way copyright is enforced today, it really involves like someone having to go do a lawsuit. You know, at the end of the day, it's like there's a copyright law that exists, but the only way that that's enforced is through an actual lawsuit, right? So someone could be infringing on your copyright and you wouldn't even know, right? It could, and it could be for like, 20 years that could be happening. And then all of a sudden you find out, oh, snap, like someone was infringing on my copyright. And so that's why I think that like the law in a lot of ways is outdated in the sense of how it functions. Maybe not in theory, in the theory of it is, but how it actually functions. So when you think about the way blockchain networks work is that if you can now sort of, if you can do something like register this voice on, this voice model on chain, and then you have these, you have smart concepts smart contracts that allow the the use the end user to interact with that voice model when that when there's an output that is created there is a smart contract that is now associated with that 
And now anytime someone purchases or streams that piece of IP, you can share royalties back to that, the owner of that voice model. And that all happens on, that all happens on chain. Um, and you don't now have, you, you, you now don't have to worry about going in and enforcing your copyright. And now uh, someone would say, well, what if somebody doesn't use that, that whole methodology? Well, then how would you be able to verify it as the end user what's real and what's not? And I think people are concerned and interested in authenticity. And so if they can see that, hey, this content is verified and authenticated by the artist, the rights holder, they're going to be more interested, most likely, in uh, consuming and engaging with that content. And it's the reason why Spotify and streaming services are popular today. You had all of this rampant copyright in the early 2000s. But now, because of streaming services, people are not like worried about like downloading a bunch of MP3 files and WAV files and get, getting an MP3 player and loading it up. And that's just a, that's too much of a hassle. Most people just want to spend ten dollars and just listen to the music that's available. And I think you're going to see that happen with the convergence of like blockchain networks and, and AI. I'm so curious to hear your thoughts on this. How does this change how labels interact with musicians? And is there a role? for the traditional label in a world that now introduces blockchain and AI to the music creation process? 100%. The, the, the role of a record label is a couple of things. It is to provide artist development, which comes in the form of like investment, um, human capital resources, you know, in terms of relationships, um, you know, and, and a variety of other things that comprise artist development. Then you have uh, marketing which is once again, capital resources, people on the ground in multiple areas around the world who can, you know, essentially uh, put your content, your, uh, your music in front of different people, the masses is what they call it. Um, and then the third thing is like the whole financial operations administration, which is like, you know, right now, like AI, blockchain, all of these different new technologies doesn't solve getting, you know, when your music is played in a cafe, um, in Istanbul, you getting paid for that. Um, so there's still a role for the traditional rights holder. What the, the challenge for them is going to have to be adopting and not only adopting, but building these new technologies to become platforms for their users. Right now, record labels and record label groups, they're like platforms that an artist can't really sign into and use the same way they use TikTok Snapchat, YouTube, et cetera. And they're going to have to upgrade to those type of systems to be more competitive, to, to essentially go after the middle class arts. Um, and I think that we're going to see that. Tell me a little bit more about that, because my next question was going to be, are they incentivized to build these platforms and go after that middle class artist? It sounds like you think they are. No, I do not think that they are co completely incentivized. I just more so see that they what, what their what their what their value proposition actually is. I don't think that most rights holders are, you know, and traditional record labels are providing things like traditional artist development anymore. Um, and they are struggling to provide marketing solutions for artists in this new digital age. Um, I think that what is what I see happening is that the the sort of like the new entrepreneur who wants to work in music and is going to have access to a lot of these great new tools. And they're going to build the new record companies and record label groups of the future. Um, so that's what I'm actually excited about. And this is where, you know, platforms like ours thrive because we're, we, 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 we are the platform for the new music entrepreneur, the new artist that wants to build their, their, their business from the ground up as a digital native. All right. And just before we go, uh, I know you briefly told us about how the platform works, but take me on a journey. Say I'm that middle class artist. How do I use the platform? How does it enable to do? How does it enable me to do some of the things that we spoke about on this show? So our product is called Trinity and we like to think of it as artistic intelligence. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the first thing that happens when, it, when, it, when an artist comes to our product is they get to train their model. They get to put their voice into this AI model. They can train their sounds. They can upload data and information about themselves to train like a chat, LL, you know, like a, a, an LLM. And now you get dropped into a user interface that allows you to play with your AI. You can 
um, take a, a song uh, that you love, let's say Marvin Gaye, I have it on my, my, my Instagram, Mar, you know, a Marvin Gaye track, and I can like put my voice on that Marvin Gaye track and hear what I sound, sounding, singing like Marvin Gaye. And it's almost like a new way to sample. Um, or I can remix that track. I can just pop that in and I could uh, type, you know, I want to hear this as a salsa, samba, techno record. And it's going to, you know, give me a, a, a 30 second uh, instrumental um, that is synced directly to that acapella. I could start from scratch. I could have an idea in my mind and just text out, you know, what I want to hear and then sing into the microphone and transform my voice into a different artist's voice. Um, I could uh, upload a song that I was working on and ask it to um, analyze um, this song and tell me how I should market it. Um, so it's really cool new ways of thinking about how to play with AI and collaborate with AI. And I could add members on my team to my account and they could now, um, you know, prompt it to, to, to give new marketing ideas about, you know, what we should do for a tour. Um, so it's a comprehensive solution around the creation, marketing, and distribution. Oh, last part, the, the last point I missed is once you're finished making something, you could distribute it to all the tr streaming services that exist in the world, social media platforms, et cetera. Dada, you have me wishing that I knew how to sing. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Well, with 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 Trinity, you won't know how to you won't know how to have to sing. It'll it'll help you sing and make you sound perfectly in tune. My music career can finally happen. I'm very excited <laughs> about this, Dada. Dada, thank you so much for joining the show today, uh, and congratulations on the launch of the new features. Thank you. Have a great day. That was CreateSafe founder and CEO Dada Leonard.